Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. And again tonight, we'll, we won't put more on our plate than we can digest. And so if you would tarry with me, we'll start around uh, verse 5. One verse for tonight. And it reads, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying, and cutting himself with stones. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. You may be seated. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I want to preach from this thought, this question. Can any good thing come out of the tombs? Can anything good Come out of the tombs. Our world is in trouble. Our society is in trouble. Our nation is in trouble. Mental health crisis on the rise. Every day we turn on the news and somebody, Scott, has called it quits. Every day you turn on the news and you see some brother, some sister, black, white, red, bound and stuck in the tomb. So many of our young people wake up day in, day out, and they're trapped in the tombs. This depression thing, this mental health crisis is, is like a snake. It's like a viper that's sucking the life out of so many. And so many come to our churches stuck in the tombs. Thought revival might be a time for us tonight to get ourselves together. To address some of these things that has people bound. Yeah. So many are sitting on the edge. Well, Sitting on a brink, yes, yes, sir. contemplating, is it worth living? Is it worth going on? Is it worth it? And if we're not careful, church, some of us can be so spiritual and so high-minded Preach. Preach that because it's not us and because it's not in our family, we turn a blind eye, a deaf ear. We walk past. We don't shed a light as if it, what, 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 the tombs, the tombs, the tombs, the tombs. Somebody right now, some man, some woman, some boy, some girl, some believer, some unbeliever is sitting right now with a gun to their head. One of the overdose in a crack house. These mass shootings are just not happening. But it is because somebody somewhere is trapped in a tomb. One of my students, one of my students just committed suicide in February. He tried last semester in around November. Didn't go 
go through with it. Wasn't successful. But he finally went through with it in February. And the pressures of life can leave you feeling like you're in a tomb. The burdens of life. Jesus. The burdens of an inappropriate touch. The burdens of my daddy left me. The burden of my mama left me. The burden of my mama is an alcoholic. The burden of anxiety. Can you find yourself trapped in a tomb? I preach. I preach. Trapped in a tomb. That's all I got for you tonight. Because I've come to serve the devil notice. Jesus. Jesus. I've come with the word that something good can come out of the tomb. <laughs> something good can come out of the tomb. <sighs> what is the answer, God? It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Mark chapter 5. Jesus leaves the masses. He leaves the masses. And he shows us that one soul is important. Deacon Johnson, he leaves the masses. And he goes over to the other side. And he begins to have a revival in a cemetery. He begins to have a revival in a cemetery. Reach, reach but I'm just afraid on tonight that some of us are too high-minded and too grand reach. to go over to the other side. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know what the other side of Utahville looks like. I don't know what the slums, the ghettos, or the well, whatever, the crack houses, I don't know what they are. But you know. But Jesus goes to the other side. Yeah. And there a man who's been trapped in the tombs. Yes, yes, yes. Trapped in chains and fetters. Yes. Nobody could tame him. Yes. And night and day, this man has made his tomb, his home, in the tombs. Mm. Society has written him off. He's out of his mind. Jesus, yes, yes. Some would say he's a lunatic. Yes. Hallelujah. But, 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 but. I suspect, I say, that he really isn't a lunatic. Hmm. Say, so Dr. Brown, what are you talking about? Well, he can't be that crazy because when he sees Jesus, when he sees Jesus, he runs and he worships him. Now here some of you sit Sunday after Sunday in your right mind and you don't have no better sense than to worship Jesus. He's supposed to be crazy. He's supposed to be out of his mind. No one can tame him. He's cut himself. He's torn his body into pieces but he has common sense enough to run to Jesus and he worships him. He runs and worships Jesus. The answer to your problem is not in the crack pipe. It's not in marijuana. It's not in uh, this and that. It's not in riotous living. But the answer to the problem that confronts our 
condemnation. The answer to the problem that confronts the church is Jesus. It's Jesus. He's been in this way so long. Sometimes you can be in something so long. And he confronts Jesus and says, hey, hey. No, 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 Somebody has a husband. Somebody has a father. Somebody has a loved one who's been in it so long. You've been in it so long so you don't even know what a blessing is when you see it. Jesus. You've been blinded by your situations. You've been blinded by all the things that have landed you in this cemetery. This dead place. This place of no life. Who hangs out in the cemetery? Who hangs out in the place with the tombs? This text shows us that there's power in Jesus. Yes, yes it is. Hallelujah. Jesus has the power over any demonic spirit. Jesus confronts him and he asks this man, what is your name? What is your name? Woo! And I ask that same question tonight. What is your name? Young man, young woman, mother, father, what is your name? We get called so much. But what is your name? Jesus. All right, all right. Jesus. What is your name? And he has the response and say, my name is Legion. The demons got to talking. The demons inside the man begin to talk. The demons answered and said, my name is Legion, for we are many. Many, many, many. many. <sighs> Just suppose Jeez. if we really begin to shed the light on some of these demons that are confronting our people. <clears throat> if a legion is 6,000, Somebody tonight is walking around with some of those same kind of demons that you're carrying. And you wonder why you can't be set free. You wonder why you can't lift your hands. You wonder. Maybe, just maybe, Scott. This suicide rate and this mental health crisis wouldn't be so bad. Jesus. If we ever can get people to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the only one that's qualified to evict those things out of my life. So, he asked the man, what is your name? And he says, my name is Legion, for we are many. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Jesus now shows his authority. Yeah. He shows his might. Yeah. He shows his step over sting, yeah. over death and the grave. He says, listen, come out. Jesus. Come out. Wherever you are. Whoever you are. Jesus says, come out, come out, come out, come out. Come out. Oh, I don't know what you're carrying, but, but tonight is a good night Jesus. for an eviction to the devil. Tonight is a good night to evict the devil and some of these demons and burdens that you're carrying out of your life. Those demons 
just started talking again. Yes, yes. 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 When they started talking again, and those demons begged him. Preach. Hey, 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 please, 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 please. Well, whatever you do, just send us into the swamp. Yes, Preach. yes, yes. Send us into the swine. Jesus granted them leave. Yeah. And the demons went into the herd of the swine that was on the, in, in the fields. Yes. Yes, This text shows us the power of sin. It shows us the might and the power of sin. Follow me. Because it was so powerful, the demons in the man, that the swine went and went down into the water and they drowned. So if it would do that to some pigs, what on earth do you think it'll do to you? What on earth do you think that those demons will do to you? And we drive by them day in and day out. On the corners, in the crack house, do you think they want to be there? Who? Do you think they really want to be on the corner? Look at our veterans who fought for this country, and now they sit, and the country has turned their back on them. No help for them. Do you think they want to be in that situation? The text says those demons went into the pigs. Yes, yes, yes. They went down the hill. Yes. yes. And they drowned <coughs> in the water. Hallelujah. Oh, those demons were powerful. But they weren't as powerful as Jesus. What is in your life is no match for God. Whatever that thing is, whatever that proclivity is, it's no match for Jesus. The text says that the man became whole. The man became well. The man became clean. The man had a new direction. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The man had a new sense of purpose. Yes. had a divine encounter with Jesus. The man got just what he was looking for. Jesus knew what the man needed. When is the last time you went and sacrificed And went to the other side, church. God is calling us to the other side. God is calling us to the other side. Some man, some woman, some boy, white, black, it doesn't matter. But they're waiting on you to come over to the other side. text says, the man, the, the keeper of the herd, went and ran and told it in the city. He ran and told the people. And the people began to tell Jesus, well, you got to get out of here. Now, why would they say that, Scott? They said it because Jesus now has busted up their market. He's busted up the market. What would Jews have to do with swine? And why would the swine be near the coast? Import and export. Jesus has messed up the market. And that's what we've been called to do. The Lord is looking for some folks to go and mess up the market. Preach. What is it like when, when, when you see that 
church that's on fire for God. And they go into those drug-fested communities. And the drug dealers and the drug lords begin to say, no, you're messing up our market. Jesus messed up the market. All of his ministry was spent going against the grain. Yes, 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 yes. Doing that thing that's not popular. Going against the grain of tradition. Somebody tonight, it's revival. But the Lord wants to help you to come out of your tomb. Somebody tonight, you've been in the tomb far too long. But tonight is your night. Then this, this man, now that he's healed, he asked Jesus, he says, I want to go with you. He says, I want to come go with you. I'm paraphrasing. And Jesus says, no, 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 no. I don't need any followers. I need a witness. He don't need a fan club. He needs a witness. But my question to you today, are you a fan or are you a witness? When is the last time you just told somebody about Jesus? When is the last time you told somebody about Jesus? When is the last time, church, you went to the other side? You stepped out your comfort zone. When is the last time? Somebody's waiting. Somebody's waiting. Somebody's waiting. I'm grateful for a pastor who thought it not robbery to send missionaries and deacons over into the project. I'm grateful for a pastor and a church that weren't afraid to go witness in the hood because if they had not witnessed in the hood, maybe, just maybe, I wouldn't have come to believe. Maybe, just maybe. I don't know how you found him. I don't know how you heard the gospel. But maybe, just maybe, our world would be different if we got some more people that were willing to be witnesses. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Time is filled with swift transition. Jesus, hallelujah. Can't you see the signs of the time? Can't you see? Our world is in trouble. And people need to see Jesus. Not these colors. Not your title. But people need to see Jesus. Don't you dare keep somebody from seeing Jesus. Don't you dare. Uh, don't you dare be so uptight that you're afraid to open your mouth about Jesus. Jesus. That's power in that name. Jesus. That's salvation in that name. Jesus. That's healing in that name. Jesus. That's way making power in that name. Jesus. That's delivering power in that name. Jesus. I love to call that name. I call him in the morning. I call him in the evening. I call him at night. What a friend. We have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to them. Call the name Jesus. 
Jesus. Yeah. Tell him thank you. There's something about that name yeah, yeah. that when you're not living right, it'll turn you around. There's something about that name that makes me feel good when I'm down. There's something about that name that will put money in my pocket. There's something about that name. Demons tremble at that name. We got to get the people to Jesus. We got to get the people to Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody needs Jesus tonight. Somebody needs Jesus tonight. Somebody wants a divine encounter. I dare you to come by faith tonight and come to this altar and say, Lord, touch me again. Lord, endow me again. Endow me to go out to be your witness. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are open. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There may be one tonight. You need to come and get to know Jesus. Come and get to know a man that can turn you around. Come and get to know a man. Come and have a divine encounter with the man that can save your soul. With the man that can redirect you. With the man that can heal your son. That can heal your daughter. You think drugs is something for Jesus? No. Your wayward husband ain't a match for Jesus. He needs Jesus. Healer. commanded Lord we've done as you commanded Lord we've said everything that you told us to say Lord thank you God we've said it all left no stone unturned now Lord there may be somebody who's sitting on the edge. There may be somebody who's contemplating suicide. There's somebody right now who's ready to call it quits. Lord, there's somebody right now walking the flow right now, wondering if I should pull the trigger. Somebody right now, Lord, has been written off. Somebody right now, Lord, whoo, everybody's giving up on them. But Lord, I'm so glad that when man gives up on me, that when man writes me off, that when man throws in the towel on me, oh, Lord, you said no, 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 no. No. You give me another chance. You give me another chance, Lord. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.